Hello people. So today I want to talk about mycobacterium tuberculosis or for short TBC. TBC is actually a very dangerous bacteria even though we don't hear from it <laughs> that much. Every year uh, tuberculosis kills about one and a half million people. So this is a big number, but obviously other diseases, non-infectious, uh, kill many more people. But it is being speculated that uh, latent forms, these are active cases, so people who have symptoms and who have a symptomatic disease. But it is speculated that around 1 billion or even more around 1 billion people have a latent form so they are infected but the disease is not active the bacteria is waiting so to say for a better time to uh, get activated or for the immune system to get weaker so it can flourish so basically if you look at this people are saying that we only see we only see the the tip the tip of the iceberg so we don't see this huge underwater potential what is underwater we only see these active cases and we don't see what is ha happening beneath or how many people a huge number has actually this latent form. The second important thing is that people, healthy people who have no, no significant immune problems, if you don't treat these people, 45% of untreated healthy people will die from this disease. So we see that this is actually a very aggressive disease that left untreated has a very high mortality rate. So why is this uh, actually like this? Why is tuberculosis uh, such a potent pathogen? So if we would take uh, a part of the bacteria, so if we would cut a slice, like a slice from a cake uh, from here with a knife, and if we would enlarge it, if we would enlarge this, we would see a structure like this. So this is a simplified uh, structure of tuberculosis. Obviously, the cytoplasm with the genetic material. But the interesting thing about tuberculosis is its um, <clears throat> cell wall. So first of all, we have, like any bacteria, uh, we have the plasma membrane. So this is an ordinary uh, plasma membrane. But then we have this very complex uh, cell wall of the tuberculosis bacteria that plays some significant roles in its pathogenesis. So first of all, uh, the first part of the cell wall, I will only point out some important parts, but the key point is that the cell wall is a complicated uh, structure with many different molecules and the, this cell wall plays a key role in the pathogenesis of tuberculosis. So first of all this part is actually peptidoglycan. So every bacteria has this part in its structure. Peptidoglycan molecule. So a peptidoglycan part of the cell wall. Then the second part above the peptidoglycan is called arabinogalactan. Arabinogalactan. Then above this molecule is mycolic acid. Mm -hmm. 
and above this molecule is a outer uh, lipid layer. So, and there are also some special molecules inside the cell wall. So you can already see that it's, it, 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 it is not a simple cell wall, like, like bacteria who only have gram-positive bacteria who only have peptidoglycan. This cell wall has many other bacteria and uh, it, it has, uh, man, uh, I'm sorry, it has many other molecules in its cell wall and it has uh, elements of gram-positive bacteria like a peptidoglycan, but also an outer lipid layer that is seen in gram-negative bacteria. And this cell wall is important be because it contributes, contributes to a feature of uh, tuberculosis that has proven very hard for our immune system uh, to solve. So the cell wall prevents the fusion of phagosomes with lysosomes. So when the bacteria gets uh, phagocytosed by macrophages, this cell wall and the molecules prevent the fusion of phagosomes with uh, lysosomes. So this is a key element of the pathogenesis. So the phagosomes, our immune cells take, so the tuberculosis comes uh, via droplets into our lungs. And when it comes into our lungs, it comes in contact with our alveolar macrophages. They phagocytose it in these phagosomes. But these phagosomes need to uh, merge with lysosomes, which uh, have enzymes that can eliminate any uh, bacteria. But if they don't fuse together, then there is no elimination and tuberculosis can replicate in these phagosomes. This is the key, the key uh, element of the tuberculosis pathogenesis. But of course, tuberculosis has also other uh, possibilities to uh, replicate in our cells as an intracellular pathogen. It can, for example, suppress it can suppress apoptosis. So if it suppresses apoptosis, infected alveolar macrophages will not uh, die and uh, they will basically just be a protective shell, another protective shell for tuber tuberculosis to uh, develop in them. So basically with this, tuberculosis develops a safe uh, replicative uh, niche or environment where it can replicate. So how uh, does our immune system react react to uh, all of this for example if mycobacterium so if, if if this would be tb if it is if it gets into our lungs into our alveoli so if the, this is the alveol, alveoli environment our macrophages alveolar, alveolar macrophages will take it up and phagocytose it but as i said here because of these uh, defensive mechanisms that tuberculosis has, uh, a normal a physiological pathway of elimination will not be possible. And if our body cannot eliminate a pathogen, it tries to uh, isolate it. So basically, a way to isolate a pathogen is to form uh, granulomas. So this would be a simple representation of a uh, granuloma that is forming due to tuberculosis infection. So what happens? These macrophages are infected and the body tries to envelop them, to isolate them, uh, forming this uh, granuloma. 
here are some macrophages that are infected with the mycobacterium. Here are some healthy macrophages. Around them are T and B cells that play a big part in the contagion of this isolating these infected, not infected macrophages and dendritic cells also and at the end of this uh, whole uh, structure are, are fibroblasts and this is a pro they form a protective capsule around this infection site and this is how a primary granuloma is forming so when a, a primary granuloma forms, the pathogen is contained in the granuloma. Uh, there is a possibility for elimination and the, the patient gets rid of the disease. But the second possibility is that the bacteria, so, so with elimination, the disease is eliminated, our immune system, uh, somehow eliminates the disease, the TNB cells contribute with a strong immune reaction to eliminate all, all, all bacteria and infected macrophages. So B cells and T cells are very important in containing this uh, infection or eliminating it. But there is a possibility for this to stay like this. If our body cannot eliminate our immune system, if it is unable to eliminate, the only possibility is to isolate it, like in, in this granuloma. If it stays isolated like this, obviously, sometimes when our body uh, weakens and when the immune system weakens, uh, the possibility to contain this infection like this uh, goes down and there is a possibility for reactivation. So this is basically a latent infection. If uh, the immune system capacity goes down, so our immune system capacity goes down, there is a possibility of reactivation. The bacteria start uh, to replicate. Uh, a, a necrosis starts to form in these granulomas. So this necrosis is typical. It is actually called... Uh, Caseus uh, necrosis because it uh, look it uh, resembles cheese. It's cheesy like it's whitish. Or cheese like. So basically the bacteria gets activated, macrophages start dying, uh other macrophages uh, are being uh, infected. TNB cells can contain this infection. Cells start uh, dying. And then if our immune system is really unable to contain it, the granulomas uh, break. Of course, the cells get destroyed uh, because of the uh, actions of tuberculosis and the immune reaction. And when the granuloma breaks, we have a patient who has an active disease and who is contagious for others because the mycobacterium gets into the pulmonary tissue, the alveoli, and gets uh, wet droplets uh, coughed out of the lungs. So we see that our body, most of the times, uh, when it comes in contact with uh, this bacteria, forms these uh, granulomas that are uh, isolating the bacteria, but the possibility to um, uh, to have a latent infection and later, for for example, of old age and other uh, factors that can um, undernutrition, uh, other diseases that can uh, chemotherapy, cancer that can lower in the immune system. There is a possibility for reaction re reactivation of tuberculosis. For example, I had a patient who undergone a very, very uh, rigorous diet, only eating a leaf or so a day. And with other problems like anemia, uh, there was also a reactivated uh, tuberculosis. Because 
if you're not eating right, if you are not healthy, there will be no proteins to sustain uh, the immune system. And the immune system will obviously be in a devastated state if you keep that for a long time. So there is a possibility for such pathogens to be activated. All of this combined with this uh, problem that therapy antibiotics need to be given for many months because of this latency and because of that some patients are not compliant uh, especially in village areas they don't understand why they need to take many pills for months it is very hard to uh, sometimes administer this therapy correctly this, and the last uh, also important thing, like many other bacteria, tuberculosis has developed resistance with multi-drug resistance strains that are almost resistant somewhere to almost every uh, drug that there is. So because of this huge pool of people, because of this uh, huge potential in its pathogenesis, and all the, all the other factors, there is a question, is this... Uh, potential uh, is here a potential for a super bacteria in the future thank you